Well, it's Starlink update time once again, and here we are five months after I first set up the Starlink unit. We've got all the different gadgets and mounting solutions and everything at this point in time. And really just bottom line is Starlink continues to be very impressive, even in its beta state. We've been launching a ton of satellites so far in 2021, and you can really tell that the service continues to dramatically improve. And in fact, we got an update from Starlink here within the last week or so, SpaceX telling us that they've now adjusted the firmware, the programming inside these satellites, our satellite units. We can now connect to satellites that have the best connection as opposed to the way it worked before. So the system continues to get smarter and it's taking advantage of the fact there are so many more satellites in orbit. So before we go into the August 2021, September 2021, you know, review, I guess, if you will, of the Starlink service, keep in mind the same caveats apply. It still is in a beta program. There will likely be improvements to it going forward, but if you are interested in getting the Starlink, or if you're waiting for it to come to your area, this is what I have found so far. So in terms of the latencies, that continues to be a very fascinating and very impressive feat by Starlink. Those latencies, when doing speed tests or on gaming, typically run in that 30 to 40 millisecond range, which is a phenomenal number all things considered, especially when you look at the competition that Starlink is really actively fighting, the existing satellite sphere, I mean, it is phenomenally better in every way, shape, and form. Now let's jump to the download speeds. I will say that as advertised, it's 150 megabits per second, and I still believe that is a very good number for Starlink to market. If you go to the subreddit, the Starlink subreddit, a lot of people continue to post these numbers that are on the very high end. They might be cherry-picked numbers for all that I know, because from my personal experience, getting numbers of 200 milliseconds, or excuse me, 200 megabits per second or higher tends to be a big outlier. If we go over 200, hey, oh, uh. <laughs> just barely. <laughs> but still, I'm consistently getting somewhere in that 150 to 160 megabit per second range. I can almost count on that. And while it's not a competing number for things like cable internet or fiber, obviously, for what Starlink's true competition is, they're phenomenal numbers. Now going to the upload, and as of all of my previous videos, I've discussed this before, upload continues to be a point at which Starlink struggles. Right now, I'm getting upload speeds in that 10 to 20 megabit per second range, which again, if you're an existing satellite internet user, that is a huge upgrade. But if you are trying to think of using Starlink as a really true alternative internet provider, that is an area where it continues to be a problem. Now this won't affect most people. Most people for your daily work, if you have five megabits per second up, you are great. But if you're a content producer where you're uploading photos and videos, you can really tell that Starlink has a hard time with large video uploads. Things to YouTube or even larger pictures to Facebook can really struggle at times. And so upload continues to be a point at which Starlink struggles a bit. Gaming continues to be totally a thing you can do, which is something that I continue to be rather impressed by. Yes, there will continue to be hiccups here and there, at least in this beta phase. But I do believe we're getting to a point where you can really trust Starlink to compete in video games. I don't know if I still would at this point in time. I don't know if I'd game for money or for ranking notoriety. Well, you can totally game with friends without any issues. And I'm not just talking about slow paced games like RTS, real-time strategy games like Civilization VI. You can play games like Call of Duty, fast-paced action games, and you're still getting latencies that are really, really phenomenal for what this is. Crushing it with the download speed? Oh, that's, that's a ripper. 260, 270. 
280. Can we get 290? 287. Wow. Oh. And in a twist, it appears we've lost internet connection. Upload straight up zero. And there we are. You can kind of see it. We're right in the middle of a test. We have downtime. It wasn't a lot, but the timing of it could not have been more ironic. Since March of 2021, the biggest improvement is now stability. Before, I would get dropouts several times throughout the day, and those dropouts could be 10 seconds long to upwards of a minute or longer. Now, those downtimes can usually be measured in seconds over an entire 24 to 12 hour period. Uh, the downtime has improved dramatically, and I'm seeing less and less of those drops, which is important for everything from video calls to even things like gaming. I did a fairly prolonged test, about a two hour long stretch of test in the middle part of the day, looking to see how Starlink is handling internet service. And what you notice is that latency continues to be fairly streamlined. You really tend to see those numbers in that low 30 millisecond range. Unlike many major internet providers like your cable and fiber internet providers, those internets tend to be fairly consistent. You know what you're gonna get for an upload and download as well as a latency pretty much at any given point. Starlink still tends to be pretty variable in that upload download speed. Latency has gotten a lot more consistent. You might get hiccups as it's jumping satellite to satellite, but the overarching latency continues to be pretty streamlined. The upload and download speeds that can vary rather wildly. When doing a test on a Monday in the middle part of the day, I have download speeds from just over 100 megabits per second to as high as 230 to 240 megabits per second. An upload can vary even wildly from single digits to over 20 megabits per second. There's a lot of range in Starlink and that continues to be one of its downfalls for now. Again, I stress it's in a beta and this will probably continue to get better with time. So I guess it's final thoughts conclusion time. Do I recommend Starlink? And the answer to that question remains the same. If you are using existing satellite internet like Viasat or you're on a DSL line, to me, Starlink is a no brainer. There's no reason why you shouldn't be jumping onto this if you can and if it's available to you. If you live in a city, uh, this will continue to likely not be an option that you want to invest in, at least not yet. There have been some inclinations that Starlink may get a lot better, like a lot better, in the future, according to Elon Musk. I guess we shall see with that. Thank you for watching this video, everybody. I hope this was useful for you. I will continue to do these Starlink updates as we progress through time. It's a really exciting time that we're in. Starlink continues to expand. It continues to get better as well. And more and more people have access to Starlink, which is just super exciting. I'm going to be doing a video here pretty soon. I'm going to have two PCs right next to each other, and we're going to be doing some competition on latency. Which one can do it better? My existing fiber internet, which continues to have a lot of dropouts, or SpaceX Starlink. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again in the next video. Gratitude. A good fight, Mr. Manus.